My organization is called Bildningsalliansen and we are the uh, central organization for all types of non-formal adult learning taking place in Swedish in Finland. Finland is a bilingual country, so we have Swedish and Finnish as official languages. And we have our members are 38 institutions of learning for adults all over Finland. They are between themselves rather different. There are study centers, adult education centers, folk high schools, summer universities, general education uh, providers. What they have in common is that they all provide trainings for adults in Swedish. Some of them also prefer offers it in other languages like English, Russian, Finnish, but mainly in, in Swedish. And they all are without qualifications. They are not formalized in the sense that they lead to a degree. So it's voluntary adult education that uh, our members are working with and offering. Some of them are working together with vocational training institutions or with open universities. And in those cases, obviously, they do provide formalized certification of outcomes. Those are always uh, controlled by the Board of Education. So they are under a curriculum provision, which means that they are not free or non-formal in the sense that our, our members are otherwise offering. Um, however, nevertheless, they are still part of the educational output of those institutions. So it's not a completely clear picture. It's a little bit of a mixed picture about what our uh, members are offering. The remaining and most well-known is the European Qualifications Framework, the EQF, uh, which came already in 2008. But as our sector is working within the non-formal field, it has taken a long time for our schools and institutions to embrace the idea that you can formalize the competencies given and the skills provided and offered uh, or training of the skills offered in our institutions. Up until two years ago, it was still not clear whether the non-formal part of Finnish adult education should even formalize its learning outcomes or write competence-based descriptions of the training offers within non-formal education, the non-formal part. An agreement which was reached in, in November, December 2019 between all non-formal adult education provider uh, sectors. There are five different sectors under the, common, under the current legislation in Finland. They all agreed that we should introduce the idea of competence-based learning um, and descript descriptive uh, usage in in the trainings that to, to identify what kind of learning takes place and how can you qualify that. In order to do that in a comprehensive and generally accepted way, you need a reference framework. You need something to rely on that other education providers have already accepted. And that's why the reference frameworks are so important because they help us to very similarly to the Bloom's taxonomy and the idea of using, for example, active verbs in describing learning outcomes, it helps us shift the focus of, of describing the learning that takes place from content related, this is what the course includes, into this is what you will learn. The easiest um, sector to start with when it comes to uh, using this has been within non-formal education in Finland, languages. Because not only do we have the European Qualifications Framework, we also have the language framework with the different levels, which is generally accepted in all member states of the European Union. And so there is no real surprise that this autumn, August 2021, where non-formal education for the first time was allowed to be part of the formalized training system by adding or um, offering courses that was generally that was put into the electronic database of, of competence developments in Finland, the Koski uh, ref, uh, framework or the Koski service, uh, languages was first on the list because they are easier to measure towards this kind of reference frameworks. We still have a long way to go in order for us to be able to include handicrafts or um, hobby activities and a lot of skills and competences that uh, non-formal education provides in the way it offers its trainings 
many of which help people develop entrepreneurial skills. But we are far from understanding how we can put that into a, a setting that would be generally recognized and understood. And the challenge is a little bit linguistic. It takes time for non-formal educators to wrap their heads around the fact that they need to learn a new lingo, which is the lingo of working life or entrepreneurial skills, for example. So while they're being provided, it is very hard to get people to see how, in what capacity, and especially when it comes to how you can validate it, how you can make that, how you can make sure that that competence that you have written in your competence description based description of your learning outcomes has actually been achieved because non-formal education in Finland is very careful not to push this into a mandatory thing and not to start introducing tests of any sorts. So we, we come back very much to the fact that it is a self-assessment which always lowers the value of the learning outcomes vis-a-vis -vis other providers. So we are still struggling a little bit with how we can how we can build criteria that we can understand and measure in a way that is acceptable by ourselves, by the end users and by other institutions, including employers. It remains a tricky part. And there are two uh, formally appro appro uh, formal approaches to this. And that is one thing is to provide very clear learning outcomes expectations of the course that that you can somehow see what is supposed to be happening and then the criteria to define how you measure those how they can come into play and we are just beginning the discussion in finland in earnest about how what kind of training the teachers need in order to be able to check on those things uh, self-assessment has traditionally been the go-to solution because that's the easy one the easiest one uh, once we are part of a formalized educational system, as Koski represents, where your qualifications and your learning outcomes are being standardized, so you can compare them with any given education uh, by vocational training institution or higher education institution, then different place things come into play. First of all, you have to you, you need to have a measure of the scope of a competence or a skill. And while the competence reference, the, the, the reference frameworks like EQF has different levels like one, two, three, four, five, six, and so on, we are not that far yet that we make a difference between um, different levels of skills or competences. We have ended up to start with in a soft way, two approaches. One is the, the only thing that we have in common between the different providers is the fact that you are offering training in terms of hours of training. So we are using the same system as the university's higher education institutions saying a study point or a study week, study credit equals 27 hours of teaching. So that's one way of saying if you are then present uh, for the 27 hours, um, you are active in class, then you can be seen as having completed that study credit and be uh, have a, have have that study credit uh, in your uh, list. Um, and the second part is, apart from that uh, study credit uh, proposal or idea, is the fact that rather than giving numbers in assessing the skill level of somebody attaining a, a non-formal non education training, is you only have two levels. So uh, approved or made the training course or didn't manage make the training. Uh, so you, we are not yet at the stage where we are prepared to say uh, you were well adverse. We give you a four out of five or a three out of five, which many traditional providers have always done from uh, primary education up until higher education. We are not there yet. And those are kind of compromises in order to get our, our non-formal education sector started on the path towards a more complex approach to levels of skills and competences and how well you manage uh, as a learner to reach the different levels. So we are not there yet. This was a one of the main discussions leading up to the 
uh, solution that was provided or offered as a suggestion in December 2019, this was the only thing that was the lowest common denominator. It is not perfect by any means because just sitting off 27 hours doesn't say anything about your ability to actually um, encompass the skills or competences that is being should be provided by the course. But it is simply very difficult to do. And to be fair, other education providers are doing the same way. I mean, very much is still based on you being present, not in 27 hours of continuous on-site learning, because you also have your home tasks, your processing, your uh, guidance hours, etc. But in general, it is the time you spend on something which is being measured and accredited rather than still the learning outcomes, the actual learning outcomes. So I'm saying this is a joint uh, challenge for all kinds of education. And I'm guessing that we will we are going to have to come back to this. The Nordic Network of Adult Learning has created a quality compass for validation, um, which is an online free tool or toolbox of five tools available in Swedish, Finnish, Icelandic, and I think English, which helps you to understand the different aspects of implementing a quality uh, assessment tool when you start to implement validation systems in all kinds of education, non-formal as well as higher education, because it is one thing to be able to say, we have competence-based learning outcomes descriptors. And it's quite another way to think to say, our institution has taken this seriously and at all levels of our institution provision, we are helping the learner to accomplish those learning outcomes, including support for guidance, including support for being flexible when things are not working out as planned, including taking the learner on the, on the level where the learner is individually, rather than saying everybody in the group starts from here and go to here and then you're done and you get a credit. Again, this is something coming to education. We are, we are seeing more micro-credentials, modular thinking, rather than a full master's or bachelor's, you're taking smaller parts. This is where non-formal education could play a really important part in providing bits and pieces to create a bigger whole. But we are not there yet. The whole system is far from being there. But I'm, think, I'm, I'm guessing if we want this to be really good, we are going in that direction. And there has been talk in Finland with the Ministry of Labour uh, because we have a skill mismatch. We have a lot of non-filled working positions and then people have the wrong skills to apply for them. So we have been talking about developing systems, AI systems that would help you as a learner to identify your strengths and also what you would need in order to be qualified to search for or to get a specific job. But that's not, that's not uh, limited to non-formal education and we are far from seeing it beyond the beta piloting stage. There has been two pilots done in Finland on this, to my knowledge, uh, but it is a very complex issue. So it's still early days also for that to take place. And I'm thinking in our field, we're still waiting. We're still trying to make the, even the basics work. So we are not prepared to take what, in my opinion, should be considered the next steps, which are the ones that you are asking me about now. Yeah, there was a lot of discussion in Finland around open badges, whether they still are relevant or not. And in within non-formal education, there is some experimentation still going on to this day, after six or five, five or six years later, after having tried to introduce it, there are still some uh, experiments taking place. Once it was clear in Finland that we are going to be in part included in the educational system, in terms of providing learning outcome-based, criteria-based trainings that is comparable to other education forms in Finland, the question came, so what about badges? Interestingly, um, there are there is a strata of, of educators in Finland who, who think badges is still relevant as a complement, as an addition 
they do not fit as such into the current competence-based framework system formalized as it is to Koski. But in terms of all the other benefits of badges, which are that they are easy to set up, they are a little bit playful, and they can cover very small learning. It's to have a full 27 hour study based one credit equivalent. Um, they play very well in with the proposals of the European Commission for micro credentials and the upcoming individual learning accounts. So with that in mind, we keep the burner on a slow burn with, with badges thinking, yes, the time maybe we were too early when well, we tried this five, six years ago, maybe it's still coming. Interestingly enough, we see that in vocational training and in the teacher training of vocational trainers, of, of when, you be, when you're supposed to become a teacher in vocational training, they have picked up uh, badges very actively and they have a national system of badges uh, to validate certain skill sets and, and trainings being offered for uh, existing uh, vocational trainers and educators and also upcoming educators and trainers and interestingly enough that can also roll back to non-formal education saying okay we were very early with this we didn't really manage to make it work now some other educational sectors are working with this. Maybe we should pick it up again. So, you know, it is just behind the corner. Within the last year, there has been several training courses offered for educators, non-formal educators on how to understand competence-based learning, learning outcomes, assessment and validation. And Open Badges has been part of that training. It's been one module of those trainings. So while, I was despairing for a while, thinking it's never going to happen. It seems people don't understand the beauty of things like open badges. Maybe it just takes time for people to come to the understanding, which we understood uh, years ago, how they actually can help. Uh, also make the idea of, of validation less dramatic, uh, less big and formalized and ideally also becoming part of the learning process, the learning journey, so that we don't think of validation as the, the final step, and then you're out and done, but rather put them as part of a learning pathway or something that we used to talk a lot about, and we don't talk so much about these learning pathways anymore.